All right, all you knuckleheads, welcome back to the BioLast Motion Control Series. Today, we're going to be talking about integrating the Emotimo Spectrum ST4 with Dragon Frame Stop Motion Animation Software. Super easy. You need three things. You need a computer with Dragon Frame version 4.1 or newer. You need an Emotimo Spectrum ST4. And you need the control cable, which you can purchase from Emotimo site. Now, to be clear, this is not... Of th this is a very specific cable. You cannot just buy it off of Amazon or eBay. It has to be the ones from their sites because they have custom works in the chips. Uh, you will also want to verify you're on the latest firmware for the Modemo Spectrum. Right now, it should be at least ST4 underscore RC007 underscore 58 or 58 SP1. Now, the first step is the power on the Spectrum. Go into the settings and page three, go to the IO connection and make sure it's set for Dragon Frame version two. Now you're gonna to wanna to connect the cable to your computer. Most Macs don't need any additional drivers downloaded. How are you PC users? You're gonna to need to download the FTDI drivers. This is done in Dragon Frame under the help menu, install FTDI drivers, and then you're probably gonna to need to reboot your computer to recede. Once that's done, you now want to connect the camera's USB to the computer. Now, make sure the Dragon Frame's camera compatibility list shows that your camera is compatible. To check camera compatibility, open up a browser and enter Dragon Frame Camera Support. Click on the link, and you'll have some various information about how it interfaces with the camera. And it'll also have a list of acceptable cameras that will work with Dragon Frame. Now, keep in mind, it might be listed but not work very well. In this case, for an A7, it uses HDMI out. It does not have live view over USB, meaning you'd have to provide some kind of a capture device in between. Best is to make sure you find out something that does have live view. Then you will want to connect the other end of the cable to the Modemo I.O. port. Be sure not to plug it into the camera port by accident. The next part is go into Dragon Frame, and under Scene, click down to Connections, and then go to Ag Connection, and under device, you want to find a Modemo Spectrum ST4, not just a Modemo. And then from here, if you have the FTDI drivers installed, you should see US serial port. If you do not see that, you screwed something up and you should feel bad about yourself. Go ahead and click on connect and OK. And you are connected to the Spectrum. Now to make things easier, Brian did support the ArcX files, and you can download those from the Omotomo website. And those are the files that are the profiles for the motors and how to get that to integrate. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to program these in yourself. So once again, you're going to want to pull up a web browser. And in the search, you want to look up Omotomo Spectrum Dragon Frame. And you're going to look for this one here. It says getting started with Dragon Frame. This is the one you want. Now, pretty much this is just everything that I've been telling you. It's all on here. However, uh, if you like seeing it done on a video, this is the way to do it. So what we're looking for is these ArcX files, okay? And they have them all here. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a Mighty Slider, iFootage, Dana Dolly, or whatever. Um, you just want to grab pretty much any one of them. So you just click on it. It's going to go ahead and download it. And then for me, this is going to be in my downloads folder so I know where it's at. Next step is go back to Dragon Frame. We're going to want to import that. So we're going to go to Import, Arc Access Setup, and then we're going to take this one that I downloaded, ST4 with Dana Dolly, and import that. And now, you can see, we now have the ability to move the camera. Pan, tilt. Uh, I don't have a slide on here, so that's not going to work. And it doesn't matter if you don't have the Dana Dolly. I'll show you how to configure all of these. And then here is the FZ for the uh, focus. You can see it's out focus. Now it's in focus. And that's pretty much that. But let's just go ahead and pretend for a second that you don't have that and you want to do this manually. I'll show you how to do it. First, we're going to delete the axis. Which, unfortunately, there's not a quick way to just clear these out. So we're just going to sit around here for a while, wasting time while I do this. Okay, so we're just going to build these in manually. And we're only going to do pan, tilt, and focus. So what you want to do is you want to hit plus, okay? And it gives you a chance to name it, and we're going to name this pan. Art Moco 1 is the one you're going to want to use. And if you go back to scene and you go into where we connected, 
this connection is labeled as ArcMoco1. We're going to use a normal function, channel 1, and if I start moving it, it's already going to start moving. But incredibly slow, so let's go ahead and crank this up. There, that's better. In fact, we could probably limit that to 300,000. That feels pretty good. And then a lot of this other stuff really doesn't matter, okay? It's just, if you, it, we'll get more into this, but if you want to set up a basic thing, you just want to set the max jog speed. Now, if you're using an Adreno setup, you're probably limited to about 16,000. If you're using a DMC-16, six, uh, you can do 200,000. I believe you can do 500,000 with the Emotimo. The acceleration is how fast it goes, settle time, how long it needs to sit before it'll do anything. Frame to frame speed. So that's when you're uh, bouncing back and forth from one move to the next, how fast you want to move. And you can lower it down just to keep the vibrations and stuff down if you're indexing. So we're going to make sure that the pan tilt, okay, it goes the direction we want. But if you want, you can always do swap jog direction and that reverses it if you need to. So very good. Let's go ahead and add tilt. We're just going to type in tilt. And we're going to once again do 300,000. And then all that looks fine. And I want to change this to be a little bit more accurate for what we're doing for a tilt. So now if I push up, no, wrong way. So I hit this. Now I can tilt up and tilt down and hit OK. And now we're going to say focus. Now in this one, you have a function in here you'll want to assign as focus. And this is going to be on four, I believe. And we're going to do 500,000. Let's just see. Oop. Yep, that works quite fast. We're going to go ahead and drop that down to 100,000. Okay. And I'm going to select, normally the way I'll do the focus is something like this. So if I push this, it focuses out. If I do this, it pulls it in. And we're just going to go with that. But I'll show you why we wanted the focus function. Now that we have focus on that, uh, the, we have listed the function as focus, we get this kick-ass little window, which just gives you a little bit of a punch in in order to get that really accurate focus. And that's pretty much it for building these. We'll go into another tutorial later about more some of the more advanced options in here. But for now, this is all you really need to get set up. And now you're ready to start setting up your shoots with Dragon Frame. Look, we got a ton of Dragon Frame tutorials on their way, so if you find this to be useful, be sure to hit the like and subscribe to get notified when new tutorials and behind-the-scenes episodes are released. Thank you for joining, and have a fantastic day.